Okay, let's continue on. We have two more inequalities to do, and they are graphically. Basically, I'm going to look at this one just like I did this one, only I've given you the graph here. I want to know where this is less than or equal to zero, which means where is the graph below the x-axis or touching the x-axis. So that occurs from negative infinity to negative 5 and then from 0 to 3. So this would be negative infinity to negative 5 including the endpoint and 0 to 3. Okay. All right, so if I want to know where two functions in relation to each other, what, this is g of x and this is f of x, and I want to know where f of x is greater than, I'm sorry, g of x is greater than f of x, that means where the g of x is above f of x. Well, that starts right here, and you're looking for the, the x values where this occurs. So it starts from 2 and goes to infinity. I'm sorry, negative 2. So this would be negative 2 to infinity. <clears throat> okay, let's look at some application problems. Alrighty, so the first one is Marissa has contacted Fine Taste Photography to take photographs for her company's website. Fine taste charges $125 for a day session plus $32.50 for each image used. How many images can she purchase with a budget of $700? State the exact answer and round to the nearest whole number. Now, you can do this by guess and check, and if you do that, you won't get any credit for it. So what you need to do is you need to identify your variable, you need to write an equation, and then you need to solve it. Okay, so we want to know how many images. So for 13, I'm going to let x equal the number of images. So the cost is going to be equal to 125 plus 32.50 per each image, or x. And we want to know where is that 125 plus 3250 less than or equal to 700? Okay. All right, so this is pretty simple to solve from here as, as long as we get it set up. So I know then I'm going to subtract 125, so I get 3250x, whoops, I forgot my x, is less than or equal to 575. And when I divide, I get x is less than or equal to 17.69. Well, they're not going to let you buy <coughs> a piece of an image. So if you round up to 18, which is the nearest, that's going to take you over the $700. So we're going to have to say 17 images. She'll have a few dollars left over. Maybe she can go to uh, Starbucks or something on her way home. Okay, so let's see what it says for the next one. On number 14, the height of a penny after it is dropped is given by an equation. And so the first time thing we want to know, so let's see on 14, let's see if you can actually read all this. Okay, so we know that h of t is equal to 100 minus 16t squared. Okay, so she's on top of a building, and she drops a penny. And this is time, and then, of course, this is the height. This is our t, and this is our h of t. So what's going to happen is, over time, <coughs> it's going to fall in a parabola. Okay, so how much time will pass before it reaches a height of 84 feet? So this is 100 feet. And so now we want to know what is t when h is 84. 
So we just say 84 is equal to 100 minus 16 t squared. It's a quadratic, so I want to set it equal to 0. And I prefer having my leading coefficient positive. So I'm going to move both of these over here. So this is going to give me negative 16 t squared minus 16 is equal to 0. Oh, well, that's handy. Okay, so I'm going to factor out a negative 16, and I get a t squared Oh, I'm sorry, that's a positive 16. t squared minus 1. I knew something was wrong there. Okay, so this, of course, factors into t plus 1 times t minus 1. So this tells me that t is negative 1 and t is 1. Well, of course, you can't go backwards. So you can't have a negative 1 second. So at 1 second, the height is 84 feet. So that's part A. Okay, then for part B, we want to know what is T when it hits the ground. Okay, so that means when negative 16 T squared plus 100 is equal to 0. I just turned it around. Okay, so this factors into negative 4 times 4t squared minus 25. And again, you can solve any method that you want. This is negative 4, and this is a difference of squares, so that's 2t plus 5. 2t minus 5 is equal to 0. So here t is negative 5 halves, and here t is positive 5 halves. Again, no negative, so it's going to be 5 halves or 2.5 seconds. And this is 1 second. Okay, let's see what 15 is. Alright, I think I'm going to go to a new page on this one because this one's going to require a little bit of work. Alright, so let's do number 15. All right, so number 15 is talking about fish. <clears throat> the number of fish in a pond. I'm just going to rip that off. Okay, so for 15, we know that P of X is equal to negative X squared plus 94X plus 1125 where p is the number of fish and x is, uh, this is important, x equals the years since 1990. So if I get x is equal to 5, then it's the year 1995. Okay, so a. It wants to know in what year will the number of fish number of fish reaches its maximum. So that's saying that month you defined the x-coordinate of the vertex because this is going to be a parabola okay, and it's an upside down parabola. Okay. So this is x and this is p of x where it is a maximum. Okay. Now, if you, you can do this either by completing the square and turning it into a vertex form, or you can just use the vertex formula. So x is going to equal with the vertex formula is negative b over 2a. And so our, we know from here our a, a is negative 1, b is 94, and c is 1125. Okay. So that's going to be negative 94 divided by 2 times negative 1, negative 94 over negative 2, which is a positive 47. Okay. 
All right, so that's X, but the, the year is going to be X plus 1990, which is 47 plus 1990, which is the year 2037. Okay, so now it wants us to find the maximum number of fish. So that's just asking to find P of 47. So that becomes the opposite of 47 squared plus 94 times 47 plus 1125. And if I've done my arithmetic correctly, that is going to be 7,752 fish. Okay. All right, 16 tells us that the estimated population of Austin is given by the population is 650,000 times e to the point zero seven t and t is the years from now. Okay, so we'll just say 2023. Okay. All right, what will the population be in 10 years? So A means you want to find P when T equals 10. Okay, so that's a pretty simple plug and chug situation. So P is going to be 650,000 E to the point zero seven times 10 and state the exact answer. This is, would be your exact answer. This is your exact. And then the approximation, yeah, we want to round it to a whole number because we don't want pieces of people. So that will be 1,308,939. Okay, so how long will it take for the population to reach 1 million? That means to find T when P is equal to 1 million. Now from the first part here, the only thing I know is going to be less than 10. Okay. Because the population is growing. And in 10 years, it's 1,300,000, so it's going to have to be somewhere between 1 and 10. Okay, so that gives me a little bit of clue on what to do. Okay, so this means I'm going to have 1 million is equal to 650,000 times E to the point zero seven t All right. Now, I've got to get this out of the exponent, so what I'm going to have to do is isolate this and then take the natural log of both sides. Okay, so and again, I'm going to have to do an exact answer and an approximation. Okay, so I'm going to first divide by 650,000. So this gives me 1 million divided by 650,000 is equal to e to the point zero seven t. Now, if this freaks you out, you can round it. I'm sorry, you cannot round it, but what you can do, let's see if I can reduce that. One, two, three, six. Okay, and see, it doesn't turn into a decimal. But what I could do whoops. is turn it into a, refer, a reduced fraction, which is 20 over 13. But you don't have to, you'll get the same answer, 0 0.07t. Now I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. Well, I know from the earlier problem that we did that the natural log of 20 over 13 is equal to the natural log of e to the 0 0.07t. 
So the natural log of 20 over 13 is equal to 0.07t. So I'm going to divide both sides by 0.07, so that's the natural log of 20 over 13 divided by 0.07. That is the exact. And then if I want to put that in my calculator, it comes out to approximately 6.15 or 6 years. It doesn't ask in what year, it says in how many years will that happen. Okay, let's see what 17 is. All right, 17. It gives us a formula on 17, and what it tells us is that S is equal to 21.9 times the square root of 5T plus 2457. Okay, all right, so what does that mean? This is the speed of sound in feet per second at a temperature of T degrees. Okay. Didn't know that was temperature sensitive. Okay, so during a blast for avalanche control in Utah's Wasatch Mountains, sound traveled at a rate of 113, I'm sorry, 1,113 feet per second. What was the temperature? Okay, so what's that asking for is to find T when S is equal to 1113. Okay, so 1113 is equal to 21.9 times the square root of 5T plus 2457. Okay, we already did one of these. To, I have to get the radical by itself and then take both sides to the power of the index. So I have 113 divided by 21.9 is equal to the square root of 5t plus 2457. Okay. All right, so if I square both sides, which I can know how to do, I get that 1113 over 21.9 squared is equal to 5t plus 2457. Now you can you can go ahead and simplify this at this point. I choose not to. I like to get because of rounding can make small discrepancies. So I'm going to subtract the 2457. So I get 1113 divided by 21.9 squared minus 2457 is equal to 5t. Now I'm going to divide everything by 5. So I get 1113 divided by 21.9 squared minus 2457 all divided by 5 is equal to t. And does it say anything? Round to the nearest tenth. When I put that in my calculator, I hope I did it correctly. I get 25.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. All right, number 18. Tony is investing in two accounts. One pays 3.5% interest and the other pays 4.5% interest. He earns a total of $375 in interest in one year. How much did he invest in each account? Okay, if you have a problem like this, once again, if you solve it by guess and check, you will get no credit. You will have to set up, and the instructions on the test will tell you, set up an equation, identify your variables, and solve it. Okay, so I'm going to let x equal the amount at 3.5% and y equal the amount at 4.5%. Okay. So we've got to do two equations dealing with the x and the y. Well, I know the total money, the total investment, 
equals $10,000. Okay, so that tells me that the amount in X plus the amount in Y is equal to $10,000. I also know that the total interest, whoops, I'm so bad about this on the document camera. The total interest is $375. So that tells me the interest from this, which is 0.035x, plus the interest from y, which is 0.045y, is equal to 375. Okay, so here are your two equations. You can solve them any way you want. I see them all lined up. You can do this as a matrix. You can do it by substitution. You can do it by addition. I'm going to do it by addition. So if I multiply this by negative 0.035, the x's will be eliminated. So this becomes negative 0.035x whoops, minus 0.035y is equal to negative 350. Okay, so that's eliminated. So you're left with 0.010y is equal to 25. And when you divide, you get y is 2,500. Well, and you subtract that from 1,000, and you get that x is 7,500. Now, you can leave it just like that because you've identified your variables. x is the amount at 3.5%. So that's 7,500. Y is the amount at 4.5%, so that's 2,500. Okay, I think this is a good spot to quit and start a new video.